Hi, Mark Rugen with GiveMeHelp.com. In this presentation, I want to tell you the truth about contour cutting. Here's a good example of what we're talking about. Printing on your digital printer and then cutting it out so that you can make a sticker or a decal. These kind of decals are used for all kinds of things. Floor graphics, vehicle graphics, and even goofy wall graphics. But I've been hearing a lot about what method is best, printing and cutting in one machine or printing then cutting with a printer and a separate cutter. So to solve this, let's look at the steps. You know, you want to print registration marks in the image, laminating sometimes, send the cut lines, find the registration marks and cut the job. Those are the general steps in contour cutting and we're going to talk about those steps during this presentation. So the method I'm using is, I found some YouTube videos on the subject. Uh, we're going to use the Mimaki printer cutter and the Roland printer cutter. And then we're also going to show some videos about the Muto cutter with GraphTech and perhaps others. And you can come to your own conclusions uh, when we're at the end of the presentation. So here's part of a YouTube video. In this example, the customer is using a Roland SP300. That's a printer that has uh, print and cut capabilities built into the same machine. No registration marks were needed in this case because they are not going to laminate it and take it out of the printer. Uh, instead, this is cutting on material that's going to be used on t-shirts. So it's sort of a uh, iron-on type of material. So you can see what happens in this kind of printer there's no need to bring the material out. It, it automatically found the cut lines. There were no registration marks needed. So this is pretty quick and that's one of the advantages of uh, this type of application. So if this is the kind of application that you're doing all the time, this might be one of the printers that, that you know I might recommend to you. You, you can come to your own conclusion. Uh, and as you can see what will happen is it will actually cut the uh, graphic out and put in all the weed lines and all that sort of thing. That's all done by your software. Software. Now keep in mind the cutting may be slightly slower than a standalone cutter because of the gear ratios and so forth of the printer. So you may have a little bit slower cutter here but the, uh, the options are clear. In this case for this particular application uh, this might be a, a great cutter to use. In this example, we're using the uh, CJV30-160 Mimaki printer. Now you can see it's printing labels in this case, right? And there are registration marks on here. Uh, once this printer stops the print, what it has to do then is initialize the cut lines and then it's actually going to move to one side of the printer where it finds the cutter. You can see it moving right there. It goes over and attaches the cutter in a separate motion so that kind of slows down the process a little bit and then it comes all the way back initializes and it's going to pull back the material and look for those registration marks so right here it's actually trying to find some of the registration marks that were on there the customer added these in all likelihood I don't know the job you know this is just YouTube video I haven't talked to the customer but in all likelihood they were added for accuracy or in in many cases they may have to be added but again the customer did not pull this material out to laminate it. If they had needed to pull the material out to laminate these labels, then of course they would have had to put, reload the material and put it back in. Same thing on the first job with the Roland. If you have to take that material out of the, the printer to uh, add laminate to it or something like that, uh, you're going to have to put it back in anyway and then you will need the registration marks to make sure uh, of the accuracy. So in this case it finds the registration marks, it cuts the giant weed border, I, I suppose that's what it looks like it's doing, and then it cuts individual lines so that the labels can be peeled off one at a time.
Now in this example, the customer is using a separate printer and cutter. They, they print it on a MUTO printer, they're cutting it on a GraphTech cutter. And what the video actually shows, according to this customer, is they like about it is they're doing two jobs at once. So they can be contour cutting or perhaps vinyl cutting another job for a banner or whatever, while at the same time printing. And that's the advantage of the separate cutter and printer. So they're going to get a little bit more production, perhaps, in many cases. But again, it all comes down to application. So what did we conclude? Well, there's two distinct methods of producing contour cuts, printing and cutting in one machine, or then printing and cutting in multiple machines. If space is an issue, maybe an all-in-one machine is the solution. If space not an issue, two machines could result in greater production because of the separate workflows. If the job needs to be laminated prior to cutting, it's going to need to be removed anyway and put back into a print cut machine. Maintenance, if, if one machine goes down, on a single device, the whole device is down. But on a separate machine, where you have a printer and a cutter separately, only one machine is down. So, which is better? You decide, and tell me what you think.